Hi, our nation. Welcome to the pregame presented by Robillard Hearing Centers and the Clock Tower Brew Pub. I'm your host, Ken Brewer. The Ottawa Red Blacks are back on the practice field with a focus on ending a four-game losing streak, the very first four-game losing streak in franchise history, as they prepare for their Friday night tilt and Eastern Conference tilt against the Red Hot Montreal Alouettes. In today's show, we have plenty of content, including going back in time for a Getting to Know Your Red Black segment with slotback Brad Sinopoli. We're going to talk kicking footballs with Lewis Ward and Richie Leone. And of course, as always, the first word always extends from head coach Rick Campbell. Dominic Davis will be your starting quarterback this week. Yeah, he made it through all three practices. He's looking good, feeling good, and that's the plan. What does that mean from a momentum standpoint, just to see the quarterback back and, and just you guys sort of getting closer to your, your lane? Um, you know, it's good to have him back. Yeah. yeah, we feel we can win with whoever's in there, but um, he's uh, he's done a good job for us, and we're definitely looking forward to having him back. What's going to be the key for him then against the Montreal team that's playing with a lot of confidence? Um, we just got to start well. Um, <laughs> and play well as a whole football okay, team guys. and uh, the quarterback's a part of that but we just want to play well as a team and, and make sure we start the game uh, start the game well rj harris getting a few more reps but uh not all of them is he close to playing or is he yeah he's he would i would say he's a question mark we're very we have been very hopeful but we're going to look at him and make sure he's not in a position to have a setback so we're going to talk to the athletic therapist and then uh, go from there on him any other moves this week? Uh, Jeff Knox looked like he was activated, uh, at least on CFL.ca. Any any changes you expect this week? God, you, you learned so much. Um, he could, he's definitely a possibility to be on. We've wanted to get a look at him. We've been trying to get him on for a couple weeks, but um, definitely a possibility um, to be on. What about, do you look at, like in particular on offense, if you look at the stats, you guys are ranked near the bottom in almost every category. Can stats lie, or is that really a picture of where you guys are right now? Um, stats can lie, um, but I would say that uh, we, we just haven't been on the field enough to to make enough plays and score enough points. So we need to we need to be more consistent on offense of stringing some drives together, and on defense we need to get off the field, and then uh, I think those stats will change. We want to, everybody, coaches, players, and everybody, fans with the Red Blacks. Um, no, we need to find ways to score more, and that'll, that's a point of emphasis that we're working on. We're a bit of a crowd coach, but um, momentum, early momentum, what can that do for you? And also, what can that do from, in terms of Montreal and their approach? Force them to go to plan B, force them to think a little more. Yeah, any football game you play in, obviously it's easier to not play the game from behind, so you want to try to start well and, uh, and uh, have things go well early, and this will be no different this week. Uh, it feels good to be back. Uh, you know, it was tough being out, but I just look at it as a learning experience and uh, just took it as a, you know, uh, a breath of fresh air. And uh, yeah, I'm just ready to get back out there and uh, be out there with my teammates. Was it important? You can find your groove again, and uh, how are you feeling? And how valuable was the time away? Maybe even though you not, you don't like missing time, but was it a valuable experience for you? Uh, it feels good to be back. Uh, you know, it was tough being out, but I just look at it as a learning experience, and uh, just took it as a you know uh, a breath of fresh air. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm just ready to get back out there and uh, be out there with my teammates. Was it important for you to step away from from the fire and see things a little differently? Maybe. Uh, some quarterbacks benefit from it. Some don't like it, and they're just mad the whole time. Uh, I take every experience as a learning experience. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I took it as I can look back and you know see things from the sideline again. And uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just happy. You know, I got that time to you know uh, refresh. You want to see a Montreal West team that you're familiar with? Mm -hmm. What do they do on defense that makes them successful? And what can you do? to get them out of their comfort zone? Uh, they play a lot of zone coverage. They make okay. sure uh, the quarterback has to, you know, read the defense. They rally to the ball real good. And, uh, you know, they're on a three-game winning streak, so 
they're playing with a lot of confidence, so we got to go in there and, uh, you know, uh, control the hostile crowd and uh, come out with the W. It's not just about throwing punches. That it has to be throwing precise punches to, to get them to second-guess themselves a little bit. Yeah, uh, we just got to go out there and execute the best we can yeah. and um, just play each play like it's our last and uh, have a sense of urgency that uh, yeah, all these games uh, going forward are very important. What did Montreal do a couple of weeks ago? What do you anticipate them doing Friday night? I think it's going to be a big run game again. Yeah. Uh, they're going to try to hit us with that deep ball, the deep crosses. So if we stop that, it'll be a good game. Taking away the run, saying it's one thing. Doing it against a big back who gains confidence as he gets more carries is another thing. It's just not one guy. It's not Avery linebacker against running back. It's 12 on one, is it not? No, it's not 12 on one. It, it's, it's 12 on one, but it's everybody fitting their gaps right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's, it's us against them. But if we fit our gaps right, last week, anytime we got a big run, it's because somebody wasn't in their gap. Okay. It was never what he was doing to us. It was always what we were doing to ourselves. If they're in their gap and they complete the tackle, they make a play, it's going to be fine. He's going to make a couple of big plays. He's a good back. Yeah. But as long as we stick to our gaps and stick to our plays and tackle well, it will be fine. There's been a really good energy about this team this week. Um, yeah. You've been around for a while now. Is it a genuine chatter or is, you know, some teams they have that, that false nah, chatter? No, nah, we're not mean? fake. Nah, no so, false chatter? So what I call that is front runners. It's, it's some front runners, but this team is none on there. Okay. Like it's, it's, that's us. That's our process. We believe in our process so much. It don't matter if we're losing or if we're winning. You saw us last year when we were winning a lot. It was the same type of team you see us losing. We're the same type of team. Everybody got good energy. Yes. Everybody sticking to the process. Everybody know what we got to do. Uh, what's the mindset right now going against Montreal? Uh, the mindset is the same thing we've been doing, man. Just got to give 100% effort. We all got to be together. And uh, I feel like as long as we stick to our game plan and do what we know how to do and play the right way, play Red Blacks football, we'll be all right. That's... Montreal came into Ottawa a couple weeks ago and won. Is that part of the thought process, going in there and spoiling their party a little bit? I mean, it's, th it's things to lose on your home turf, you know? I mean, yeah. they right up the road, and we like to think of this game as a little bit of a rivalry. So we, we definitely want to get that back in the win column and get one on their home turf, definitely. What kind of kid were you growing up? Oh, man, I was crazy. I was uh, nonstop, so I played... Yeah. I played a lot of sports, um, which I think my parents just threw me in because they realized I was just such a handful. They just yeah. <laughs> throw me somewhere Person I can run energy. around. Yeah, <laughs> My dad used to sit on the couch and just tell me to run around the house. See how many times I could do it in half an hour or an hour just right. so he could relax a little bit. Welcome back to the pregame. When it comes to football, there are three phases of the game, offense, defense, and special teams. And when it comes to special teams, none do it better than punter Richie Leon, who leads the CFL in punting average, and of course, kicker Lewis Ward, who's kicked a record-breaking 64 consecutive field goals. I had a chance to talk kicking footballs with them and talk about their relationship and their pragmatic approach to their art. People want to know the secret to your success. It hasn't changed, has it, since day one? No. No, since I've been here day one, nothing's changed. It's the same thing, mechanics, hard work, uh, a lot of time put into it, and it's working out. When you talk about muscle memory, it, it really leads back to your practice habits. Yeah. And your relationship with Richie as well, does it not? Oh, absolutely. You know, like we, we all take it very seriously. And, I mean, you'd say that if you ask me or, like, my kicking coach or some guys, not each kick is the exact same, and that's the goal is to make it the exact same. But, yeah. you know, the muscle memory is there just from practice, little drills and working on things. How do you not think about the next one? Um, I don't have to. Um, you know, I just come off to the sideline after the last one. I know the next one's just going to mean just as much if, yeah. I, if I get it. Right. Um, and then just go back to, like you said, the muscle memory. You walk onto the field and you just, just go about your day. 
yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a whole trust thing, and it even includes LP. It starts with LP, and, um, you know, we've been together for two years now. We've put a lot of work in, and um, we're lucky enough to spend the whole practice together working on all our little stuff, and, um, yeah, it's a finely tuned machine. I've told a lot of people that the kicking game is a lot like golf. Yeah. Where the more you practice, and the better practice, the better practice habits you have, not just spending time out there kicking the ball, but actual habits will determine your success on game day. Yeah, it's uh, very comparative, especially the yeah the mental approach too. You know, there's golfers that go out there and hit a bunch of balls every day. They do a good job, just like us. We come out here and practice and hit a bunch of balls, and then um, you know when it's in game time, you get one shot, one kill. It's a lot like golf. Every day, it's uh, every every day we go out there. It's an opportunity, yeah. and uh, you know, depending on conditions, which really affect us. You yeah. know, we don't try to go out there and be Superman. We just try to hit the ball that we know we can hit in the given situation. And I think that's. Uh, take some maturity comes with that you know when I was younger I was trying to be something that I wasn't and you know as I've gotten older starting to understand myself more and uh, have a good approach to each game that's my goal every week to have a good plan and I stick to that. Hey our nation it's time for our name the legend contest presented by the clock tower brew pub eight locations in the national capital region to serve you to be eligible to win that gift card simply visit the clock tower brew pub Facebook page and post your answer along with the hashtag name the legend and here's your hint. He played for 13 seasons for the Ottawa Rough Riders, played in three Grey Cup games, winning two championships, one in 1973 and one in 1976, and is Ottawa's all-time leader in points scored with 1,462. It is time to name the legend. Good luck. How you doing? Excellent. Okay, let's first talk about you growing up. Okay. Um, in Peterborough. Long time ago. Yeah. What was it like? Who? What sports were you playing? Were you the athlete guy? Were you the student athlete? What kind of kid were you growing up? Oh man, I was crazy. I was uh, nonstop. So I played yeah. played a lot of sports, um, which I think my parents just threw me in because they realized I was just such a handful. They just yeah. <laughs> throw me somewhere Throwing I can run energy. around. Yeah. <laughs> My dad used to sit on the couch and just tell me to run around the house. See how many times I could do it in half an hour or an hour just right. so he could relax a little bit. Uh, but yeah, just a lot of fun, a lot of sports, a lot of mini sticks, a lot of hockey, stuff like that. Uh, you know hockey well? Peterborough Pete Hockey? No, ver hockey very well, yeah. Okay, let's go yep. to Peterborough Pete Hockey. Okay. I'm going to give you uh, multiple choice. Oh, no. Tell me which player did not play for the Peterborough Pete's. Are you ready? Wayne Gretzky, Steve Eisman, Mike Ricci, or none of the above? Gretzky, Eisenman, Ricci, or none of the I'm above. I'm pretty sure Gretzky never played for the Peets. Did he? Don't tell me. <laughs> three <laughs> games. The, the, three, three games? games. Oh, three man. Games. That does, that, that's I thought you were talking full though. seasons. Okay, no, no, my we bad. We drank okay. some of the water in Peterborough okay. and it just took off. Okay. There, so really, you guys launched his career. <laughs> Uh, 1884 in Peterborough, the city of Peterborough. You mean the year 1884? Yeah, okay, okay. okay, here it is. Here's a question. What did the city do, the first city in Canada ever to have in 1884? The uh, high, highest hydraulic lift lock system. You were close. <laughs> you saw, did you take engineering at Ottawa? No, I didn't, but I, I always tell people that. Uh, the street lights, electric street, street lights. Oh, but okay. you also have the fountain that shoots 250 feet yep, in the air, right. which is the largest shooting fountain in Canada as well. Oh, okay. okay. And the largest hydraulic lift lock system. That's Don't it. forget about Very that. Good. Not yeah. just a football player. Um, what's a GG? First horse out of the gate in a horse race. That's what it is. Yeah. So that's the, that's the official term. It's not garnet and gray. It's not whatever the Carlton Raven people call it. It is. Yeah, I don't don't listen to whatever they call that. Uh, Ravens, I don't listen to them. But it is a lead horse in a race. Um, okay. Yep. You've had a great career. What would you like people to say about your career when it's all said and done? Uh, I just hope you know. I hope that fans enjoyed watching you play. That's that's one thing. I yeah. hope that uh, they just know that I you know everything I have I give to to the team and and to them and. Uh, just don't leave anything on the field, or sorry, leave it all on the field. <laughs> don't leave anything on the field. Save yourself for your God. career. I hope they think I was a little bit funny too. That'd be cool. Um, there are two athletes on this field right now who are top Canadians in the Eastern Conference. Name them. One would be obviously you. Be okay, other. and who's the other? In terms, of, you mean like like in Eastern Conference? Another receiver that is on this field right now who was a top Canadian in the East. But lost to Ray Algard in the final voting. You? Hey! hey, hey all right. There you go. Yeah, that's Brad Sinopoli. This is getting to know you. Thanks, Eddie. I Excellent. appreciate your time. Thank you very much.
It is now time for my three keys to a Red Blacks victory over the LOS Friday night in Montreal. Number one on defense, stop the run. Slow down William Stanback. He's the hottest rusher right now in the CFL. He's a big running back, a strong running back. The more carries he gets, the more confident he will get. So you have to make sure you meet him at the point of attack early and often in the game and force the coordinator on offense for the Alouettes to look to plan B. And that plan B is Vernon Adams, their quarterback. And if you can put the ball in his hands, take it out of Stanback's hands, and you give yourself a chance to win. To do that, you have to tackle and create turnovers. And that will also allow you to build some momentum. This team is desperate for some positive momentum to know that they're in the right direction after a four-game losing streak. If they can turn the ball over, create a short field for offense, and really do themselves a great service in trying to win a game Friday night in what will be a very tough barn uh, in Montreal against, a red, again, a red-hot LOS football team. And number three, and perhaps the most important, quarterbacking. Looks like Dominic Davis will start for the Red Blacks against the Alouettes. He has to play with confidence. He has to play with a sense of calm. Not try to do too much, but also not be hesitant. Don't be afraid to make plays with his feet, with his arm, and more importantly, with his brain. Take what the offense, or sorry, take what the defense gives you. And if you can do that, put you in good steed to win a football game on the road. So that's it. Those are my three keys. I'm Ken Abrera. This is the pregame presented by Robiar Hearing Centers and the Clock Tower Brew Pub. Thank you for joining me, and we'll talk football real soon. Hope to see a TD place as well. Take care. Bye-bye.